Hello guys, so in this video I want to show that if I'm going to take uh, the dual uh, vector space, which I'm going to consider in this case just r to the power of n dual, and we want to show that this vector space is going to be span of e1 dual and e n dual. So in other words, to show that, uh, that e1 dual up to n dual is going to be a basis, I need to show two facts. The first fact that uh, E1 dual and EN dual is going to span uh, R to the N dual. And another thing that we need to show that uh, E1 dual and EN dual are linearly independent. Okay, so to show the first, uh, we need what we need to do. We need to take like any linear functional alpha. In our um, vector space. And what we're going to do with uh, our linear function alpha, we're going to evaluate our linear functional on some vector v, where we know that vector v uh, is going to be written in terms of the basis, because if I have a dual basis, this means I got this dual basis from the basis e1 and en. So if I'm going to take a vector space uh, v, and I'm going to take a vector inside it, then I can find coefficients a1, uh, an, such that my vector is going to be written as a1, e1, up to an, en. And what I'm going to do, I'm, when I took my linear functional, I'm going to relate my linear function to so I'm going to have alpha of a1, e1, plus an, en. And from here, I'm going to use that this is like a linear map, so it, that means I can split this ma map as a sum of uh, alphas of ai, ei. And since a, a1 uh, is going to be a constant, I'm going also to factor it. So in other words, that means I can write is a1 alpha of e1 uh, dot plus an alpha of e n. <clears throat> so to show that these vectors over here, I actually going to spend my uh, dual vector space, I want to show that I can write this linear functional as the sum of my dual vectors evaluated at vector v. But here we need to remember like the definition of the dual vector. What do we have? We have that if I'm going to take my ei uh, dual and evaluate each e, then I'm going to obtain either 1 if i is equal to j or 0 if i doesn't equal to j. So uh, we can see that if I'm going to take right now my ei star in evaluate at v, since v can be written as a linear combination of my basis, then that means as an output for this evaluation, I'm going to get the coefficient in front of vector <coughs> ei. So in this case, I'm going to have ai. So that means then every like coefficient over here can be rewritten as um, e1 dual at v alpha of e1 dot 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 plus um, e n dual of v uh, alpha of e n, where each of this term over here is exactly is going to be have the output. Uh, my constant in front of my linear function, uh, linear function, which is evaluating in my basis vector. So in other words, if I'm going to rewrite this expression, I can see that alpha v is going to be equal to alpha of e1, e1 dual at v plus that, 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 alpha of en, en dual evaluated at v. So Every like expression of this form is going to be a constant, and if I'm going right now to kind of factor my uh, dual vector v, then you can see that um, my alpha is going to be written as a linear combination of uh, dual vectors times some constants. So that's why it means that uh, the dual vector is going to spar 
that is going to spawn, span R to the N dual. And the next step is going to show that this vector is a linear independent. Uh, here, actually, I'm going to show it over here. So for that, we need to show that if I'm going to take a combination of C1, E1 dual, plus Cn, En dual, is equal to zero. Then the linear combination is going to be linear independent. If I can show that the only possible choice for C1, Cn, uh, touched as the left-hand side, is going to be equal to zero, it's exactly when C1 is going to be equal to Cq, is going to be equal to Cn, is equal to zero. But we can obtain that if we're going to take this expression and just observe, if we want to evaluate this expression, for example, at the vector E1, then what I'm going to obtain? I'm going to obtain C1 E1 dual evaluated E1 plus, plus Cn En dual evaluating at E1 is equal to, is equal to this is going to be the only term which is not zero. It's going to be equal to one according to our definition. So I'm going to have equal to C1. And this term, for example, En dual at E1 is going to be zero as all previous terms. So I'm going to have zero plus plus zero. So I'm going to have C1 is equal to, and since the original, our left-hand side was equal to zero, then from here I'm going to get that C1 is equal to zero. Because I basically applied left-hand side, right-hand side, to the vector e1, where I consider 0 as a 0 functional, which assigns to every vector 0. And if I'm going to change this instead of e1 uh, with like ei, then I can show that ci is equal to 0. So that's why I'm, if I'm going to apply this operation n times, I'm going to get that each constant is going to be equal to 0. So that's why uh, the dual vector rn is going to be spent by these vectors because they're going to be linear independent and these vectors are actually their linear combination is going to give any linear functional on the vector space Rn. Okay guys thank you for watching if you're not subscribed to my channel please subscribe and have a nice day.